We will do it two more times, and once we know it better, then we'll only sing it one time through. And we have to also learn the rest of that uh, song in Hawaiian, which has a, a few different words, but some of the same ones for the other parts of the body. Po o po o hivi kuli va vai. Po o po o hivi kuli va vai. Po o po o hivi kuli va vai. E malama kokino. All right. I think I said I would do it three times. I think that was only twice. Po o po o hivi kuli va vai. Po o po o hivi kuli va vai. Oh, 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 he be coolie, bye bye. Hey, my lama coquino. There. And we'll try to pepper our lessons as much as we can with some words in Hawaiian because it's fun to learn a new language. And that's the language that everybody spoke here once long ago. Everybody, and still many people, do speak Hawaiian. So it's fun to learn a different language. And some of you already know some other languages. Hmm. Seems like I'm having a problem streaming, but maybe not. Uh, but the recording will be there. My head is cut off in that one right now, but um, now what's next? Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, Crooked Man. Uh-oh. Ready? Get the rhythm. Ready? Here we go. There, that's too fast. I just realized. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who bought a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. Good. And if you would like to sing that, those songs, or do that poem uh, on your own at home, or teach it to others um, when, after lesson time, that would be lovely. All right, counting to 100, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I'm going to slow it down, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, use your fingers, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100! Yay! We did it! All right. I think I see someone peeking in the door. I wonder who it is. Come in, come in. Let's see if I can change the camera angle to say hello to you. You can see the rest of the messy classroom still organizing stuff everywhere. 
It's Auntie Jackie sashaying across the floor, looking like she's dancing with a little umbrella leaf of some sort. Yeah, I learned a lesson today. Welcome, welcome. Good I'm going to do this one now. Yes. Uh, Me this too. is the, the Thai Vai, or the Namaste from India, which is the same idea. Good to see you. Welcome. Shall I come, come up along right? in. Yes, yeah. please. So nice of you to visit today. And what have you? I'll move some things so you have places to put stuff. Well, what have you brought us today? I was in the garden again and was listening some more. And I learned some things from my um, the other teachers yesterday. We were talking. So as I went to listen, I started to use more of my senses. And I could feel and hear and smell things from the night. I could smell, I could smell the wetness and the, I could smell and feel the rain that had been there in the night. And I could smell that their soil was wet and, and uh, I, could, I could like start to understand that it was wet last night. And then I, then I, that's when I start to close my eyes again because I feel like I could hear some stories coming to me from last night. And the fairies were using these last night for their umbrellas. And so they were teaching me this morning that if, when the rains come, they just have to go and stand under one of these or ask to pick one and it becomes their umbrella. And so I brought one of these. And, and today, really, today it is sunny and so you could use it as a shade, yeah. as a shade protection, yeah, sun protection. The sun. And so if I show you the shape of it, you can see something that might be familiar to you. Hmm. And I saw that shape and I turned it right side up. So this reminds me of a lot of things. And I can imagine you guys are thinking about what it reminds you of. Does it remind you of something that might fly? Mm. Mm. Wings, it, perhaps. Yeah, does it remind you of a oh. suit or a heart? Oh, I thought you were going to say heart. And I remember the word in Spanish is corazón or heart. Isn't it? Okay, and this is a, a plant that we know in Hawaii that's often used for food. It's also used to wrap food with. So this is a taro or kalo. Uh, the fairies really know how to um, make use of what's in their garden and they're not just thinking about a rain umbrella, they're thinking about other things too, like probably you are. And then another thing I learned from them is if it gets dark at night in their garden and they still want to be um, finding things, they come near this flower that's standing tall in the garden and this flower is their torch. So it shines and reflects the moonlight and they use it as a torch to light their way. And we actually have a name for this one called Torch Ginger. It comes out of the ground like a ginger. <laughs> That's a very big flower. It's big. So as I sat and listened and learned some things from the fairies, something else caught my senses and it was this tiny little sound. If you can imagine where I was sitting in the garden, it was near a whole bunch of little critters going. You have to listen very carefully for these guys. But when there's so many together, their sounds combine. So I'll put this down. And I'll give you a hint by showing you this. And some of you know what I am talking about when. I go in the garden and I lift up the lid of this, I move the paper over, this is paper. And I look inside the tub, I'm gonna put the paper down here so it isn't so messy. And inside the tub is something that some of you guys know, you guys have explored that with maybe a, a small garden tool. And I have this little pick. And as you look a little closer, you're gonna start remembering if you saw these before, that our little friends, mm, they are, they like to hide from the light. Come on, you little friend. I'm imagining you right now, you're sounding out that word, woof, 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 all those worms. Some of you enjoyed putting them on your hands, and I'll tell you, that must have been a big trick you did, because I can hardly get this worm on my hand this morning. Mm, it's hard to see. Ah. We're gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna make. A, I'm gonna have to work on these guys and ask them to come out. And maybe tomorrow I can show you. That was a tiny one, wasn't it? Oh, it was a very baby one. Here we go. 
Oh, there's some. There's one. So now, oh, so tiny. You might know this about them. They're, they really enjoy the moisture in there. They really enjoy how wet and muddy it is. And they're chewing on all the little vegetables we've given them. And they also chew on the paper a little bit. There they go. They prefer it inside their little worm area. It's hard to show you worms, but here they they, show, they showed up for you. They were eating. I got to hear them. And as I walked out of the garden to bring you these things, I could just smell all the flowers coming alive and all the moisture from the night going into the ground. And they were waking up to meet the new sun for today. And then it started to get hot in the garden already. So I'm glad I got to show you these things. Thank you so much. Would you like to put the torch flower in this jar? Sure. I, think right. it will, I will have to cut it, I think. Okay. I'll, I'll leave that with you. And then the students can see as we collect more nature items, we might even make a nature table that you could do the same thing at home. You find something beautiful, ask it if it wants to come inside with you and add it to something you could look at when you're working in the house. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you get to hear some munching today or feel some rain or uh, listen for some fairies. Aloha. Well, thank you so much. Oh, this all the things you said made me think of many different things, but I will uh, keep them to myself at this time and we will move on to the next thing we're going to do. We have two more things, three more things I would like to do today actually. And one of them, let's see, let's start with the form drawing. So I think that you, you practiced drawing the straight line down the middle and a curve on this side and a curve on that side. And maybe you can do that with your hands at the same time, let's draw the one in the middle again. You can even pick up a pencil or a crayon and go down the middle and try it with the two our hands together. Maybe up or down. Try to see that line, how you can make them the same. And I don't know if you tried this on your own, but it's a little more challenging than you would think looks kind of easy but then when you go to do it it's like wow it doesn't it didn't turn out how i thought it would this one and then this one we could do it one arm at a time almost like swimming and i'm keeping that middle line right there and i'm not crossing it yet yeah okay here it is moment of truth so if you have your main lesson book with you open it up and if you don't you can do this later but the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna take your <coughs> main lesson book and you're gonna draw a line with your finger. It's, not, it's going to be an invisible line, won't it? So you're just gonna draw, imagine to draw a straight line there, and then on the side, remember where this one is, you're gonna draw this one like that, and remember where this one is, and I'm gonna draw this one like that, just with my finger. <coughs> Once you've done that, you can take some, I would take a yellow stick crayon. If you don't have your materials, you can just remember or you can rewind this and watch it later. Yellow, because you can fix it. If you do yellow first and you don't like how it turned out, you can just kind of pretend you can't see the yellow and use something like gold a little darker. Not too fast, not too slow, not too high, not too low. Oh. More rhymes. Slow, low, toe, row. Other side. Okay, I'm gonna start at the same height, way up here by the top of this line, but across here, I'm gonna make my way to the, toward the middle, but not quite touch. And back out. And end right near there, and right below there. I've been doing this a long time, so if yours doesn't turn out quite like that, that's okay. Other side, I'm going to start the same distance away from this one, somewhere over here. I'm going to make my way to the middle. Back out. That's in your main lesson book on the very next page from where you, the very next available page. So probably on the back of, or the, the first page was person house tree. The second page was this, 
and the third page is now this. So once you've done it in yellow, you may take a gold, and if you want to just go right over it, you can. Or if you realize that your yellow one turned out a little funny, like if I had, if I had done this one, and had started in the wrong place, and ended in the wrong place, if I did it like that, I can just, since I, you can't erase it because you're not using chalk, but I can just take my gold, and I can do my gold one as my redo, Then, to hide that mistake, I will take my yellow again. Let's see if I have a bigger yellow. Wrong yellow. If I, to hide that mistake, I would take my yellow block crayon, and I can just color in the background all yellow. And with yours, you can go right over your orange. You can go right over it like that. Use that yellow block crayon on the widest side to make a background. widest side, and I'm going to make a border all the way around. And if you've got yellow everywhere on yours, then your blue might look green, but that's okay. I'm pretending that this is the very edge of my page. I'm going to put color everywhere on my page. A blue border on the outside, a yellow background, and gold, or if the gold is all of a sudden still not quite showing up, you can get your orange, which is what I used. I think I have a darker orange. I could probably demonstrate a little bit more as to darkness. It's more of a pink, isn't it? More of a pink. Um, the same color. Go over it one more time. So we have a nice deep color. And that's that. And if I want to try and erase that line a little more, I just make my yellow a little darker. And if it's not done right now, that's okay. You can finish it later, más tarde, later. And um, the next thing I want to do is I want to finish this drawing of the little girl who was so poor, and yet she gave away the things that she had because she wanted to, just because she wanted to. She likes doing that. And her arms fill up with the stars that have fallen down to her and transformed into coins. So I will finish my drawing. I hope that you watch the first part of this and do the first part of it uh, on your own from yesterday's lesson. I started with the trees. I put them way on the edge of the paper so that they're way on the edge, like if this was the side of my paper right there, and if this was the side of my paper right there, and the branches, and then I made the stars next, and then I made the little girl. And I'm gonna continue working on the little girl. I, again, use my yellow because I can go over it, I can fix it. If I make, it too, make her too small, I can make her bigger. I got her. It's like an underdress.
Think about her shoulder is there. Her hand comes up over here. And her, cup her hand a little bit like that. And then I'm going to take some brown and make some hair. shoulder and I just leave the front part of her face empty and then I can imagine her smile but I'm not going to draw her mouth or her eyes I'm going to leave it to our imagination once you have that you put a little foot down there at the bottom And you, she's got two feet, of course, but when she stands like this to her side, you can really only see one. You can really only see one leg, and you can imagine at the bottom, you can really only see one foot. And, oh, it's getting to be 28 minutes after the hour, so almost time to finish. So I'm going to get my blue crayon, and I'm going to continue doing the sky, and I'm going to come back to these trees. That was just like the rough sketch. And I'm going to bring the sky all the way down to about there. And then the rest of this, do a combination of brownish. This is my block crayon held on its side. And I'm going to, I'm going to go over that brownish with greenish. Because in the forest at night, hard to tell where the sky and the ground separate. When we look out onto the ocean, it's very clear. There's the ocean, there's the sky. And except a couple years ago when it was very foggy all the time, I often couldn't tell where the line was. And at night in the forest, you also cannot tell very well where the line is. So I'm going to blur it a little bit after I do my green. I'm brushing past this a little bit because I can come back and fill it in later. I've got my brown, and I might even bring the brown up into the sky a little bit, so it's sort of hard to tell where one stops and the other begins. And of course, the ground might be brown, or at night, of course, it may be black. So the next thing we're going to do, after we finish the sky, and the ground, is to work. take our black stick crayon, after I'm done with this, black block crayon actually, and we're going to go over the sky. Because it's nighttime, it still kind of has a feeling of blue or purple in the sky at night. Mostly it just looks dark black, doesn't it? And I'm still, I'm kind of going light still because I am going to continue down with my yellow, my yellow stick. And I'm gonna, you can make little dots, little scribble, tiny little scribbles, so tiny that it almost looks like a dot if you squint your eyes. And I'm going to put some extra ones down there by her, and the ones that are coming down toward her, I'm making a little smaller. somewhat carefully with the side of my block crayon. I'm curious how these are going to turn out. Maybe you can ask your, the person who takes care of you to send me a photograph of yours when it finishes because I've not tried to teach drawing to children who are not in the room with me. When children are in the room with me, I can go around, I can help people. You can ask whoever takes care of you for some help. I like to go back later and just kind of fix the messy spots. And again, I'm going to fill my whole page up. And 
and maybe after I sign off with you, I will come back and work on it even more. So that tomorrow when you see it, it will have more branches on the trees and things like that. So I'm gonna bring the blue, the sky, blue of the sky, right down in here a little bit, because I love to mix colors. I don't even really notice, well, why would Mr. Coulter put blue down here on the ground? Well, sometimes at night, especially, the colors just kind of blend together a bit more. So that's that. And I will keep working on mine, and you may keep working on yours. But there's one more thing I want to do today, which I don't really have time to, but I'm going to practice. This, this drawing is um, for the story, but it's also the beginning of the alphabet. At the beginning of first grade, we go through the letters one by one, because each letter has lots of different things it does. Some of them have many different things, and A is one of the more complicated ones. It has a lot of things it does, and the lowercase a is actually one of the trickier letters to write. Often we do the lowercase letters later, at the end of the school year, or maybe even next year, but this year things have kind of gotten slowed down, so I'm gonna do the capital letter and the lowercase letter at the same time. And if you feel like the capital A is as much as you can handle this time, that's fine. <laughs> but if you already kind of know how to make a capital A and you want to start working in the lowercase A, that's okay too. But all of the letters, not only is it important that you have a good pencil grip, those of you who came into the school and I showed you the good pencil grip with three fingers, that's tricky, isn't it? You have to practice to make it feel normal. It feels awkward at first, but the letters all also need to be formed in a certain way because when you get to be a grown-up, if you want your writing to be nice, then it will be good if you were in the habit of making your letters in a good way. I discovered one letter that I was making the wrong way even just until two year, last year or the year before. I was making the lowercase f and I was starting at the bottom. And it just never looked very pretty when I was writing quickly. And I learned it's supposed to be made from the top. All the letters are made from the top. So let's just, I'll show you my lowercase f problem another time, but um, I'm gonna make a capital A over here. I'm actually gonna erase, no I'm not. I'm gonna point the camera over this away. I'm gonna bring the camera over this way. And I'm gonna make my uppercase A over here. Now, I know that many of you know how to make an uppercase A, but I want you to, um, just like the form drawing, when we go nice and slow and easy and we practice, we're going to do the same thing with uppercase A. And tomorrow, we're going to put it in the main lesson book. But for now, we're going to practice a nice big capital A. I'm going to start at the very top, and I'm going to, I'm going to go down at an angle. An angle means not straight this way and not straight that way, but side, kind of kitty corner at a bit of an angle. Oh, this is the crumbly chocolate. Here we go. I'm going to make it nice and big. And you, if you didn't already do it, you can just try it up with a pencil on a piece of paper. And again, you can use your finger just to aim. How is that going to look? You can imagine how it's going to look. And then I'm going to draw the line across. Straight across. I see several things in this capital A. And A says, ah. And it says, ah. And it says, A, of course. Like in the word apple, it says, ah. And in the word, in the name, I don't know, um, Abraham, it says, A. And it says, A in lots of words. And ah in lots of words. So, A, ah. Lowercase, it's half the size, just like a little child. And you know how some children don't look that much like their parents. This one is like that. This lowercase a does not look very much like its parent, does it? That's pretty good. It's a little squished, though. I'm going to try again. I have chalk. Try again, I'm gonna use a different color so you can see it better. A little rounder. Yeah. 
always start right here and always go this way. This way, follow it all the way to the top and then back down. This one is one of the tricky ones. Some kids go here first and they're going this way. Nope, start right here at the very top. Go this way, follow the arrows, down like a jump. Loop, day down back again. Okay, so you can practice that with your finger, you can practice with a pencil, practice it several times in different ways, and then tomorrow we'll put it in our main lesson book. Phew! Well, we squeezed in our lesson again, took up about 38 minutes so far, and I hope that's working out for you. Um, I will say goodbye, good luck, be well, do good work, and keep in touch. I'll post anything, uh, all the little things I suggested that you do on the website so that you can see what those are. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back to working on my drawing. Thank you. I'm gonna stop recording here, and I'm gonna turn on